Welcome back to Gaming Top Down. Today I'm going to be playing Daitoshi. This will be a solo playthrough and also my very first playthrough, so I may make a mistake. I have read the rulebook many times, but there's a lot in there, so hopefully I won't. Let's go down to the table. I'll teach you how to play really quickly and then teach you more of the minutia as we are going. So let's head on down. <laughs> Okay, we are down here at the table, and this is a big game with a very, very big board. Here on the left, it has eight panels. Um, not the largest of panels, it folds up pretty small, but it's still a very big board. So it doesn't fit on my uh, small table the same way most smaller games do that I show. So I am much more zoomed out in order to be able to show the entire game because of that. I don't think my camera like fully is perfectly focused. There's a little bit of distortion among the at the edge while it's like trying to fish eye to get everything. So uh, please be patient with me on that. But I am going to be changing camera scenes around here a little bit. Um, but yeah, let's just start here with a teach kind of high level of how this game works. So this is the city of Daitoshi. And in this game, we are trying to um, be the most successful, I guess, steam factory owner and use our various resources that are shown over here on our factory board. Um, in order to expand the city, the city is shown by this circular board. At the beginning of the game here, there are these five, and pardon the train honking, <laughs> uh, there are these five tiles here that make up the board, and we'll be putting more out as we expand the city and when you move your magnate you'll be moving to a different kind of district or pizza slice of the city and placing your magnate in one of these three spots here in order to send workers out and activate any workshops in that district you'll be taking the action of that district um, but that also exploits some of the land and the land is shown here at the top of the board in these different tracks. There is the river track, the underground, the mountains, and the forest. And so as these different pieces of land are exploited, that can be a bad thing for you as a player. Because if you take too much of that exploitation, then the yokai in, that are responsible for that specific type of environment or biome uh, will be upset and you'll be in conflict with them and it will hurt your production in your factory by making you flip over some of these boards that go on top of your board. This one is a very simple example, is the underground kind of cave system. And you're going to hold workers here and you can hold up to six. But if you're ever in conflict with that yokai, then this flips over and you can then only hold two until you have kind of restored your balance with that particular yokai. Um, so that's something you have to check for at the end of every turn. I'm um, going back here to the uh, city board. So on your turn, you can choose one of two different things. One of them is a city action, which is to move your magnate one or two spaces clockwise, um, or you can pay steam in order to go three, four, or five. And then wherever you stop, you get to uh, activate worker workshops, the action, the exploitation of that district. You can even, uh, based on which action you do, you can electrify a district to flip over some of the tiles to a better side. Um, and we'll go over all of those actions as we get into them in the game. Some of them have to do with getting new inventions from this symbol here. Those inventions will go in your factory. We'll show them in just a second. Uh, you might trade with different cities um, and even establish partnerships with them through these little flag tokens here. You have to trade your uh, luxury goods, which are one of your four types of resource you have in the game. You have food, energy, construction uh, goods, I might call them bricks because it is an image of a brick and luxury goods. 
there are also wealth tokens, these ones here, and they count as wild for any of these four. And then there's also steam, and steam is important because it is needed in order to uh, kind of run your factory. You have to uh, pay these steam costs in order to produce in each of these three buildings that you have here on your board. Uh, we'll go over that a bit more in a minute. Um, yeah, so those are some of the actions over here back on the main board. There's also the contribute to the mega machine icon. That action can be done whenever you are at the same district as the mega machine here, or when you go to the town hall, which is this district up here, has this wild symbol there. Uh, it's more costly because you are going to exploit two different biomes, but you can do any action there, including to contribute to the mega machine. When you do that, you can trade in one of your inventions from your board if it is has been upgraded to the status of having this symbol on it. That symbol means it's ready to be donated to the mega machine. When you do that, you get a university technology that will go in the same spot you just placed it in. You'll place yours face down on one of these spots and get a bunch of stuff. Points. You get to move your uh, worm bus and move some of your, oh, what are they called? Pilgrims along the different track exploitation tracks up at the top of the board, which we'll go over in a minute. So that is a contribute to the mega machine. The other one I kind of mentioned already is to electrify a district. You'll flip over one token paying the electrification cost and getting the uh, bonus listed here, which might be more uh, prestige, which will move your prestige marker. Anytime you move on that rondelle or circular track, you'll get whatever bonus you land on. It might be two luxury goods, two invention improvements, um, to send one of your pilgrims out to get rid of one of your exploitation taxes. That's a very important one. Um, things like that. Same thing here with your silkworm bus. Whenever it moves, you will get whatever um, bonuses are listed at that location. Um, let's see, what are the other actions? We talked about trading. We talked about, oh, this one here is to expand a district or to renovate a district. And you can see the cost here in construction goods is two for the middle section and four for the outer section of a district, um, or three here in order to not expand, but to just uh, renovate that district, which will let you get rid of one of your exploitation markers and get the bonus for uh, kind of uh, purging that exploitation from your record. And those bonuses are listed here on your player board. It might be moving a pilgrim or an invention progress marker, getting a food, moving your silkworm bus a couple of times. Um, and so that is that symbol. And I think that is all of the symbols. That was a very high level. Again, we'll go into those in more detail when we start taking actions. Um, I guess a couple other things to note when you move, I'm going to be playing this green magnate here. Um, the mayor is who I'm playing against is the purple. And then we have a non-player color just here brown to just kind of get in the way when you do move your magnate you place them in one of three different spots here in the district the leftmost spot costs two steam but it lets you remove all the workers from that district before you start placing your workers in order to activate spots the middle one costs one steam uh, you don't get to remove any workers but you can then start placing your own and the third one here doesn't cost any steam and any number of uh players can go there and you don't get to activate the workshops. You just get to do the action there. So you usually want to go somewhere where you can put some workers out. Um, I don't start with any workers, but uh, 
the mayor does because of a card we drew for him, which we'll go over in a minute. So yeah, we'll be moving around this city board a lot of times with our magnate in order to uh, do the main actions listed out there in the city. Other very important part of a city turn is at the very end of the city turn, I get to take my production gear here. And if it's in this spot, meaning that I produced in my factory last turn, I get to reset it here to this reset stage in the middle. That just uh, restricts you from being able to produce in your factory two turns in a row. Um, you put it over here on the turn you do produce and are the production leader. Then when you're done, it kind of slides over here saying that you are not allowed to produce until you've done a, a city action in the city. Um, and then that will reset. Over here on your factory board, we're going to track the different resources that we already mentioned, along with my steam and wealth. Um, this is my chimney on my factory, and it will let me gain steam anytime I gain water or coal. This is going to move up and down along this track. And anytime you move in the direction of the arrows, then you generate steam. So starting the beginning, I'll be here at zero. Um, but if I was to move a few spots up here by getting three water, and then I was able to get three coal, one, two, three, I would move back down to zero. And that would have generated three steam for me um, by moving along those arrows. Um, so you'll be moving back and forth along this path and some points of it generating steam. When you do take exploitation tokens um, at the end of your city actions, you'll be placing them here. If you ever have two of them, the second one is flipped upside down to the conflict side. And that will uh, mean at the end of your turn, you will be in conflict with that yokai and part of your board will get worse. We already went over this one with the underground, which breaks four of your places to hold workers. This one um, makes it so that you don't get to upgrade your um, invention progress markers when you produce. This one, instead of getting... Uh, Oh, sorry, it's actually three steam for every uh, arrow that you pass. But if this is damaged, then it's not three anymore. It's only two. So you can kind of see how that affects that. And the last one is over here for the mountains. And that one makes it more expensive. Instead of one and four steam to activate the middle and right building of your factory, it will cost three and seven. So you really don't want to be in conflict with the yokai um, if you can help it. And if you are, then not for very long. You also have this one government grant. And so once per game, you can use it to uh, um, produce in up to three of your buildings for no steam cost. But if you use it, then you flip it over and it's gone. If you haven't used it by the end of the game, then you get to immediately upgrade three of your inventions, which um, could get you some victory points or something else at the end of the game. Um, okay, I think we've gone over most of the aspects here of your board. Here on the rightmost section of your board, I know it's a little uh, zoomed in and probably a little tricky to see, but this is where you're going to slot your inventions and eventually be able to upgrade them by sliding them upwards. You will upgrade them by moving this cube kind of along this track here back and forth, and eventually you'll get to this arrow symbol, which means you can upgrade it. You'll get to this symbol, which means you can donate it here to the Mega Machine. This symbol gives you victory points, <clears throat> excuse me, and that is a... Uh, number of victory points equal to the number listed here on the right side of this invention. This is one of the most basic inventions. There are innovative and brilliant inventions and the university inventions. Or, sorry, they're not called inventions. What are they called? No, I think they are actually called inventions. I think I was right. Um, so you'll be upgrading those. At the beginning, they start like this, and they'll only produce anything with a check mark 
if you're the one that is doing the production turn, then you get to activate the blue and pink check marks. So I would just get two wealth um, along with boom, boom, two upgrades there because I activated that invention twice. But after it's been upgraded, then I would get both of those and the luxury good and the victory point. So um, you do want to get those inventions upgraded if you can. Um, and yeah, basically on a production turn, you get to spend as much steam as you want. Well, I guess not as much up to one time per building. I can pay this amount of steam to activate all the inventions in that building in whatever order I so please. Um, and the cool thing about this game is even though it's a pretty heavy Euro game, uh, it also has a follow mechanism. So when I produce, everyone else gets to produce on their board as well. Um, they will just uh, produce a little bit less effective than me. They will get the blue check marks on their board. Again, they have to pay the steam for it in order to uh, produce in that area. But hey, they're getting something, which I think is good. I'm going to turn my uh, light up just a little bit. I feel like my screen is a tiny bit dark, and I want you to be able to see that a little better. Oof, that might be too bright now. Okay, let's uh, change our mind there and go back, I guess. Okay, that'll work. Um, so that's a production turn. You're going to be activating all your machines. If you were the person triggering it, you get the pink rewards, and you get to move two cubes our cube movements for every single invention you activated. And you get to move one of your pilgrims up a uh, pilgrimage track for each building you activated. So if you activated all three of your buildings by paying seven steam, then I would get to move up um, three of these tracks with my pilgrims. These tokens have to be taken first for me to move up those, but you can see they will be worth a certain number of victory points. Purple victory points are at the end of the game, not now. Um, but that uh, probably brings us to end game scoring, which, um, and then we'll talk about how the bot works a little bit. But at the end of the game here, we're gonna score for a few things. So we're already gonna have our uh moving over here a little bit our victory point marker moving along the board during the game and then we will add to that first triggering our government grant if we didn't use it to move up three invention progress markers then we're going to score those wilderness tracks and the four of them score in different ways the green track I'll score the number of points on the location my pilgrim is on multiplied by the number of university inventions. That's these purple ones that are in my factory. For the yellow mountain one, I'll score points equal to the spot my pilgrim is on multiplied by the number of progress markers in my factory that are at the very rightmost spot. So like fully upgraded inventions. The underground cave one score, the number of points the pilgrim is on, multiplied by the, uh, what is that? Your reputation level. So the number of points listed here um, on your reputation track. This is something else that you can go up. You start at the lowest level here at two, but that can go up to seven if you get three reputation upgrades. And then the river is score the victory points on the spot your pilgrim is at multiplied by um, the number of hex types here that you don't have. So if I had a forest one and a mountain one, but not a river and underground at the end of the game, that's two empty spots. And I'd get to multiply that number on the river track by two. Then I'm going to lose points um, on the river track. You lose the number of victory points times 
the number shown in red up here. Let me go move back up here. So the river spots also have red numbers on them and you can lose points there. Um, multiplied by the, uh, oh, the number of your, where is it? Operation tiles of which there are four, um, as many of these that you were in conflict with at the moment at the game ends one, two, three, four. So hopefully time zero would be best there. And then, um, you'll score one victory point for every two workers and leftover resource you have combined and steam is not a resource it's just something for running your factory okay the bot up here i'm gonna move up here just the uh, little bit he is run by this deck of cards which uh i need to shuffle and actually flip over they will be on this side actually and his cards will show us a couple things we'll flip one over and it will show us what actions he wants to do this turn and based on a bunch of different requirements which district he would try to do some stuff in um, that doesn't relate necessarily to the district he's going to try to do those actions in um, and then if there are some times when you need to check what kind of worker or track you would want to go on. It's based on this um, display here. And then if there is a scenario where he would take an invention from the basic innovative or brilliant section, and we don't know which one to take, it's based on this arrow here. So in that scenario, it'd be the top one of the two. So there will be a little bit of logic in uh, figuring out where he's going to go on his turns. The three cards that we drew for setup, three is the easy game, and you can, I think, go all the way up to 10 or something cards that add some difficulty to him are this one, place a mayor's partnership banner on the leftmost city. So he's going to start with this flag already there, which uh, not good for me. But hey, good for him. Then he got a worker of each type in his uh, factory already. And we can see that uh, those four workers are there. And then during the game, anytime he needs to gain a worker but can't because his worker spots are full, he will gain five points. So that's a during the game thing we need to watch out for. And then at the end of the game, he'll get to perform any three pilgrim actions before beginning end game scoring. So those are the two things we need to keep track of during and at the end of the game. So I'll keep those cards over here for our kind of setup for him. I've got a supply up there of the different worker colors and types, the district pieces that are going to come out here on the board. And then down here at the bottom left, just below my finger here, which you can't see, the upside down stacks of the level one, two, and three inventions. Um, not sure if I explained everything perfectly, but I think that is an okay starting point now that we're already, you know, 25 minutes in here. So we're just going to jump in and figure out the rest as we're going. And hopefully I won't make too many mistakes. There is a bit of, like I already mentioned, some logic you have to uh, go through in order to decide where the solo bot's going to move. And so I hope I won't miss anything. Um, I play first. And so I guess I just need to uh, <laughs> decide what I want to do. So I'm starting over here in this district and I can move one or two spots for free. I don't know if I want to exploit two spots at this point. I don't have an invention ready for the mega machine. So going to the wild spot doesn't seem like incredibly important. Getting an invention, though, um, might be pretty nice, to be honest. Hmm. 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 I think. Uh, I think we'll do that. So, oh, the problem is I need a worker, don't I? I guess I don't have to use a worker. 
Hmm. Yeah, I don't have a yellow worker, which is a bummer because I would like to, when I go to that spot, place him here to move my worm bus twice. How do I get a worker? I get them by taking exploitation markers at the end of city turns. And is that the only way? can get one from buying this, uh, well, not from buying it, actually. Well, I could actually from buying it, but it's pink, and that's not the right color. Okay, I can already tell this is a, a pretty tricky puzzle. Maybe I want to pay a steam and go here. I could go to the Mega Machine. Um, should let me score some points. I'd have to have a blue worker, though. All of this is uh, falling apart with my worker stuff. Hmm. Well, maybe I just don't worry about it too much now. I guess since I'm not going to be placing a worker, I don't need to spend any steam. So I will move him forward twice here. Um, just let me make sure I'm following this. So I move my magnate, place workers. I don't have any. Now I uh, exploit. And so I need to take this uh, water token here. And we'll place that right there in my factory. And since I did that, I get two water, one, two, and a blue worker. So now I do have a worker, which is good. Okay, and then we're gonna perform the action. The action here is to commit to an innovation. I, I can't remember if they're called innovations or inventions. Invention. Commit to an invention. So that's down here. And which of those do I want? I only have one food, and I don't know that it would be especially smart for me to uh, spend my one wild resource I start the game with at this point. And I have two options here. I guess I forgot to mention this. I can take one paying the food cost, and if I do, then I get everything on it whatever those symbols are, or I can pay for and take two and slot them in my factory, but I don't get everything listed on them. Hmm. Yeah, that is tricky. I don't think I want this one. That's just mainly victory points. Energy. Oh, another wild would be good though. These ones are really nice though. I, I definitely don't have three foods, so I'm just going to take this one. I think we're going to pay my one food for it. So back over here on uh, my board, we've paid my one food. Now have zero. I'm going to slot this one. Do I want it here or here? I'm probably going to put it here. Only these bottom three have the pink production uh, icon or check marks as well. Yeah, so I'm going to do that. And then I get one of those. So I'm going to take the energy. The, um, I guess I need to check. That one is usually a convert with the arrow symbol. Let me make sure I'm understanding that. Yeah, I think I'm understanding that correctly. There's an icon here that says... The middle reward on this type of invention with the arrow needs one of the leftmost resource to be spent in order to gain it. Um, so I still think I get it. But then to do the middle, I would need to pay it, which I'm going to do um, in order to get another wealth token here. And then one victory point. Hey, I'm on the board, baby. Okay. I think my turn is just about done. So I performed an action now in cleanup. If the mega machine was in my district, it would move. If I end my turn on the district with the non-player character, then he would move three spots. Um, but I think at that point, I guess then we check, see if I have a conflict with the yokai. I don't because I only have one of those water pieces. Um, I flipped this over here for the bot during our explanation, but I'm actually going to keep that. Okay, so he has a little bit of logic. He will look at districts clockwise 
to see which one meets the two uh, conditions that he needs them to meet. And so we're going to look first at this one. Oh, sorry, this is the mayor. So she will look at this one. That one does have the symbol from the card, the trade symbol. Um, so it meets requirement number one. And then the other requirement is that he has enough resources to perform that action. And I think he has to have at least one luxury good in order to perform the trade action. Let me double check that real quick. He will spend up to five luxury goods, gaining all the rewards he pays. Um, and so he will spend two and he will do it in the next spot here that he doesn't already have a partnership with. Okay. Okay. So that's not too bad of a turn for him. So he is doing these two things here, which are three victory points and place one of his banners there. So we'll place banner there for him and give him three points. So he's up three to one and I think I actually did that in the wrong order. I should have done his workers first. Um, so he would move here, I guess. Let me uh, slow down here. I'm jumping ahead. Um, so he will place his workers and he will place as many as there are locations spots as long as he has the right colors and so he would uh and i think he goes to the middle location if he has no workers then he goes to the rightmost space if they're okay so he's going to go to the middle space he doesn't ever pay steam or anything he does have a red uh worker here so we're going to take that guy and then uh go back to the center i know i'm hopping around a little bit i'm going to put this worker here that one is going to give him two movements on the blue track and so he will go one two um let me move up there for a second you can see he's moved two spots up here um, and that is one of the ways he will score points at the end of the game okay so now we uh moved his workers now we'll take the exploitation token place it right here for him i'm gonna slide those out of the way just a little bit and then after he exploits i think he does this all just in the same order as regular player he gains that green worker placing him here then he will perform the action i already did the action for him i should have waited but he would then trade with that city which he did he got three points and put his banner out um and then he never has any conflicts uh with the yokai so you would ignore that and his just get put one two three four and then uh any others are discarded so um he also did not end his turn in the spot with the mega machine or with a non-player character so nothing else needs to be done there during cleanup i don't believe so now it is uh back to me hmm i guess one thing really quickly until he's taken his first claim and invention token he has this bribe token and this will i'm just going to set it on top of all of his cards all of his cards have that symbol on it until he's done it at least once so that's what that is okay back to me we need to move our magnate or produce I do have two inventions. Hmm. But then do I want to give him stuff? He doesn't have any inventions yet. Oh, well, he would have started with one of those. 
basic ones, I'm sure. Pretty sure it didn't say not to give him one, so I uh, forgot that. So I'm going to add that. All right, now what do I want to do? Oh, I did need to spend his resources for his uh, trade with that city. Okay. I would like to... The next spot is here. And that one is being blocked currently by that dude. I have a blue worker. I might be smart to go there. So I'll move two. And then I could... Uh, Contribute to the mega machine. I don't have an invention ready. Hmm. But I could send the worker there to that workshop on the mega machine, which will give me two points plus my reputation in points, which would be two more points. I don't know if that's most worth it. I am going to move there though. So that is one, two spots for me. Cost me one steam to stop there. So I'll pay this steam back to the supply. Then, after I have moved the magnate, I am placing workers. I have a blue worker. Hooray. So he will go here. Um, and by going there, I will get three steam. Seems kind of smart planning for the future. I started with seven. Uh, but I feel like I'm going to need a lot. So I think that's good. Then I'm going to exploit, which is to take... This tile here, it's a uh, the underworld under the caves. I don't remember the term they used. Gives me a red worker and a coal and a coal moving down droop, should give me three steam. So that was a kind of a steam filled turn planning for the future a little bit there. I got a bunch of steam now. Um, and then last up, perform the action. And I think I do want to uh, do that. I'm going to renovate or expand the city. It costs me two building materials. I only have one. So I'm going to spend one and one of my wealth. I will grab this topmost tile here. And I think I get to place it wherever I want. I'm just going to place it in the same spot there. Just for uh, fun, I think. And then... Uh, when I do that, I also get to purge one of my exploit tiles. You've built like a, a shrine or a temple to that yokai to try to restore your balance with nature. So I'm trying to decide which of these two. This one would let me move the worm bus twice, which would give me a couple, give me an energy and a steam. But this one would let me move on the blue pilgrim track, uh, which seems pretty good as well. Hmm. I think I'm going to do this one. So I get to get rid of that token. Uh, where to set it? I'll set it off screen over here. And move twice on the worm track, which gives me one energy and one steam. And now I am there. I will take the steam. This was a steam filled turn for sure. And one energy there. Oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't supposed to place that off uh, sc screen. I was supposed to place it right like that. So now there is a new worker location. This spot here means you have to match the color. So it also has to be blue but it will let you remove one of your exploit tokens. Since it doesn't have that little conflict flame symbol there next to it, uh, you don't get the bonus shown here. But hey, getting rid of them is good so that you don't go into conflict with the yokai. All right, I think 
that is all of my uh, actions here. I exploited, performed the action, and now I just need to uh, clean up. So I ended my turn on the same location as the Mega Machine, so it moves one counterclockwise. And I think that is the only cleanup there because uh, I'm not with the non-player character. Okay, we are back to the mayor who wants to do one of these two things. The next spot for them is the town center, which doesn't have either of those symbols. This card does have the uh, city center town hall listed there. Um, so I do believe that he will go there. And does he have, oh yes, there you can place any color workers in the, uh, town center. So he'll move there and he pays from, uh, left to right, top to bottom from his workers. He also places them in that order. That's why that green one went there. So he will place this green worker there in order to get a brick. Then he will exploit, which is water and underground, um, shown here on his card. He takes them like this. Um, and by taking them, he gets a green and a yellow. Oof, I believe. Let me double check. Oh, never mind. Okay, so he takes these. Since it's blue, he'll... Um, I gave those to myself. Uh, so blue, he will get a blue worker and a red worker. And then it says to just flip these upside down. He will never accumulate more than four of these tokens. So blue and yellow for him. And he is going to start getting points really fast as those workers fill up. Okay, he placed his workers. He exploited. Now he needs to do the action. The action shown there on the wild space is he will always prioritize, I can say words, the Mega Machine action. But if that one is not available or he doesn't have the uh, resources to do so, then he will, the Mega Machine is in the district or if he's in the town hall, he will do the Mega Machine action. Or if he's in the town hall and can't do the Mega Machine ac action, he will perform the action for which he has the most resources. In case of a tie, then he would follow this breakdown. He uh, has the most brick. He has two. So he is going to expand a district. And he's going to prioritize this district here. Um, if he can, which he can't because he doesn't have four bricks to do the third district piece here because that one costs four and so i think then he just does the next one clockwise to find a legal space yes okay so he will pay his two bricks in order to take this and he will build it right here because that's the next most clockwise spot and then he will take this exploitation marker, um, which moves him again up on the blue pilgrim track, which I've got up here. So he just moved again there because he has uh, purged that exploitation marker there and place that right there. I'm pretty sure it said to do that from top to bottom. It did, yes. Gaining the rewards as usual. Okay, he expanded the district. Then he would, he doesn't ever get in conflict, so we don't need to worry about that. And he didn't end his turn with the Mega Machine or the non-player character, so we are back, back to me. 
Okay. Well, I've done two city turns. It might be smart to produce at this moment. Yeah, I don't know. It seems kind of wise. It would give me a couple uh, more resources. Let's uh, move the camera down here and do that. So I'm going to do a production turn. So I move this over here. And then I'm going to produce this machine and this machine. So that's going to cost me three steam. So I'll just uh, pay these three back. I have a bunch right now, so that's okay. And then I'm going to get one, two for being the production leader. Two wealth tokens. One, two. Don't get this or this because this invention's not upgraded yet. I get one, two energy. Where is that? It's here. One, two. And then I don't get those because they're not upgraded either. Then I uh, get two movements here. Boom, boom. For both of those. Didn't quite get to an upgrade spot there. Then I get to move up whichever pilgrim track I want for the number of buildings I activated, which is two. And I think at this point of those four scoring conditions, hmm, I don't feel like I'm doing well on any of them. I uh, don't want to get behind on the river one though. So I'm just going to move one, two on the river exploit or a uh, pilgrimage track. So I'm one spot behind him right there. Okay. Now let's come over here to his board. He is also going to, uh, follow and do production. So he gets one wealth token from his machine and we'll get to upgrade it once. He doesn't get the pink check because I was the uh, production leader. Um, okay, I'm pretty sure that that is everything in a production turn. I think the last thing I need to do is just move this gear over to that spot, showing that I cannot produce until I have done a city action. So we are back to the mayor. Mayor's gonna flip a card. I'm gonna go back to the center camera. And he wants to ah take an invention, which is the next spot. So he will move there. He has a yellow worker, so he will go there. He will take this worker here, place him here, which lets him move his uh worm bus. Whoops, I accidentally moved his instead of mine earlier. But he's moving the same number of times, so we'll both be on this spot now. Laid them down so you can see them a little better. But so he's gonna get a energy. He never gains steam. Everything is free for him. But we will give him that energy for those two movement. Then he will exploit. He takes this water tile here, which will give him a blue worker. And then we will flip that over right there for him. And I think that is everything we performed. The, we didn't perform the action, so we do need to do that. Okay, so he's going to claim invention tiles down here on the left. I did need to refill this one. Okay, so he is going to take the up to two as many as he can based on the food and wealth tokens that he has. I think he always prioritizes taking two. Um, and so I think he'll take two basic ones. Let me double check. Yeah, with two food, which is what he has with his uh, wealth. So I'll get rid of his one food, get rid of his wealth token. He's going to take both of these. Since he's taking both, he doesn't get the stuff on them. But going back up here to his factory, he gets to slot them in and he does his from uh, left to right, top to bottom, um, or bottom to top, excuse me. So he took um, his action cleanup. He's not in the location with the mega machine or with the non player character. So uh, no cleanup there. Okay, back to me. I can't produce. I did last time. My production gear is on the 
not allowed side. I have a red worker. Hmm. This spot I could come to. Move up on a pilgrimage track. Do the trade action. And by paying steam, I don't have very many luxury goods being the problem. Uh, but I do have wealth, so I could... Which one of these would be best here, though? Looking down here at these... Uh, cities to trade with when you get your banner there um then anytime you take that action shown here you can remove your trade banner in order to get the special benefit there uh, and i do feel like that would be worth it and i feel like this one here is pretty dang good it's whenever i take an exploit tile from the forest i can remove the banner in order to get a level three invention and uh, get all the stuff on it. That seems pretty powerful there, to be honest. So I think, uh, yeah, let's do, let's, let's go there. So we're just gonna move one. I don't have two red workers, so it wouldn't be worth it for me to go to this spot. It costs two steam. So I will pay one steam. Put out my red worker. He's going to go here. That lets me move on a pilgrimage track. Let's, uh, let's move on the forest one since there is a free spot up there. Just a little quick look up there. I moved one spot. Okay. And then for the action, or oh, sorry, I've got to exploit. Um, ex going here, I would be exploiting the forest ad ah, is kind of a bummer that exploiting goes first and i'm pretty sure that is the uh order there specifically listed exploit and then yeah okay well i'll just have to uh exploit at the forest again so i will take this forest exploitation um piece here put it right here which gives me a green worker and a coal, so I move back down to zero, which gives me three steam. One, two, three. I really like the uh, chimney thing, that's cool. Um, okay, I exploited, now I can trade with a city, and I'm gonna spend one luxury good and two of my three wealth tokens, so that it was like I spent three luxury goods, which gives me two, four victory points, and I get to put one of my banners here. So I will put that right there. I really wish I would have had five, because then I could have activated that immediately. But alas, I do not. So uh, let's give me my four points. One, two, three, four. And now that I've done the action, clean up. I'm not in the spot with either of the cleanup items, so I am done. All right, back up to the center. We're flipping over the bot's card. He wants to go to the Mega Machine or to trade. The next location does not have either one of those symbols and is not the town center. Um, the location after that does also not, and it's also not the town center. Location after that does have trade, however. So I do believe that this is where he will go. Since this is a red location, he doesn't have any workers that are red. And if he doesn't have any workers that are red, will he go there? I mean, I think he still will because he has... Or no, he will not, because he doesn't have any luxury goods in order to perform the trade action. And the Mega Machine is not there. Okay, so scratch that. He will not be moving there. He will be going all the way around to the uh, town center. Sorry, town hall. And he does have some workers. So he will move 
joink all the way around here. He would move to this spot so that he can remove this green worker. And then he will place his worker here so he can get a brick. Then he will exploit, which is to take this water and a forest tile. From those two, he's going to get a blue and a green worker. Oh, man, now he is full. So he is going to start earning lots of points. Um, one of these will go face down here. And the other one is just discarded, it says. Okay, so that was exploit. And now he is at the town hall. So he will do a town hall action. He does not have an invention ready to... I need to discard this because he has bribe or uh, taken inventions now. He does not have an invention ready to go in the mega machine. So he can't take that action and so the action he will do is whichever one he can most afford which is energy which is to electrify a district when he electrifies a district he is looking at he prioritize electrifying this one and he would do the outermost section he can pay for um and he can pay for this one yeah so he will uh, electrify this section right here it will cost him two of his electricity but he will get to move once on this track here the prestige track and he'll get two luxury goods for that oof that is solid so this worker goes away this flips over he ignores water um because he doesn't need steam and now this is the uh electrified side which does look cool and you can see it has the same uh, action. And I think the only difference is the workshop there is better. So now it will move you three spots on the worm bus instead of one or two that was on the other side. Okay, he took the action. He placed workers, exploited, and now he is uh, in cleanup, but there's nothing there to clean up. So it is back to me. Last turn was actually this city turn, and I forgot to place this guy back in the middle, so that should go there. Um, which means, that means that I could produce if I really wanted to, and one, two, one, two, I would get one of my uh, inventions upgraded, which would be nice. Use a little bit of steam. But that would be fine. Hmm. Or I could go over there and move my worm. I don't have a yellow worker, actually. So I could go over to that one and remove an exploitation marker and then electrify something. Ah, oh, that sounds pretty good, actually. I'm going to move. Yeah, I'm going to go one, two, three spots here. So it cost me one extra steam to go the third spot and two steam here because the other guy's blocking. So that's three steam. Get rid of those. Um, and then I can place a worker. I'm going to place this one. And then I'm going to put this uh, forest exploit marker back, which means I get a food. And then I'm going to exploit the mountain. So I will take that, which gives me a yellow worker and a coal. Yellow worker coal, that's not, not the same way as the arrow, so I don't get anything for that, but good to move it. Okay, and then I can electrify. And I believe I can electrify any of these that I want. It looks like they have the same... Reward. Oh no, that one's water. That one's coal. I think I want the coal though. I'm going to electrify the same one that uh, that we're on just for fun. So that's going to cost me one, two energy. It's going to give me a coal and a prestige, which will give me two 
luxury goods. Um, and then I need to move both of us, get rid of this green worker, flip this over to the electrified side, put us back on here. And now I have done exploit, perform an action, and then clean up here is going to be a lot of things. The uh, mega machine, ooh, which maybe would have been smart to do. It's okay. Uh, we'll move one counterclockwise, and this guy will move three clockwise. One, two, three, blocking this middle spot there. Okay, and I think that is my whole turn. And I am not in conflict with any yokai, which is good. All right, we are back to the mayor who wants to either electrify or commit to a invention can commit to he cannot commit to an invention because he does not have any food his food's at zero and so since he couldn't pay for those and doesn't have any wealth tokens he uh would not do that one he also doesn't have energy so he wouldn't do that one um I believe since there's not a town hall icon over here, he will do a production turn. So we'll do his uh, his production stuff on his board, and then I will get to follow it as well. So he will get boom, boom, one, two, and two wealth tokens. So this one, this one is also two upgrades and two food. And this one, one well he'll get those first so two luxury goods one two and then he gets to upgrade it slide him up and he gets the victory points listed on it which is just one point so he's going to move up to four and i am at five move that off screen to the left but i did it over there um okay that was his production i'm pretty sure i didn't miss anything Okay, back to me and my factory down here. Um, I also get to produce. I have to pay for it, but I think mm, I think it's worth it just mostly because I want to upgrade my uh, invention. So I'm going to pay the one, two, three steam in order to get a wealth here. Move this up once and get an energy here. Move this up once, which does finally upgrade that one, which is nice. Okay, now that I am done following him, um, he is done. I don't think he does anything else on his production turns other than what we just did. Um, well, actually, he gets to, uh, I f almost forgot, he gets to move up on the... Uh, pilgrimage tracks he activated three different buildings and since it is any uh what's that called any pilgrimage path he will choose to follow this one if he can so he's going to go on blue one two three times so he's uh hopping over there he's a ways ahead of me now moving three spots over there. All right, now we are back, back to me. Uh, let's see, one spot here would be the caves and expansion. Two spots would be the forest, which would let me get this cool invention for free and get the stuff on it, which seems, uh, Pretty good. It seems really good, I think. But I have to pay the two steam. I also don't have any red workers. So I'd be like missing out on putting red workers out there. So I don't know if the timing is perfect. Yeah, I think. Uh, I don't think it is quite yet. I'm going to produce actually. So we'll hop down here to me. Move this over here and then produce. So that is two wealth tokens i've got four of those and one two so this guy is upgraded now 
Then it's boom, boom, two energy. I can get this conversion if I pay an energy, which I'm going to do. A lot of wealth tokens and um, a victory point. So I will move up to six. Okay, and I get to move this one, which gives me a victory point two. And now this one is eligible to be donated to the Mega Machine. So now I'm up to seven points. And that was my whole production turn. I believe, I don't think I, uh, let me just double check. I know I've been doing a lot of checking, but I just want, oh no, it wasn't. I've, uh, I need to follow this. I did two machines, so I get to move up on two tracks. I'm going to move up on the mountain track one and on the water track one. Okay, now I have done everything, I believe. So we'll move this gear over here. Oh, bam. Which means I can't produce for a minute and we're back to the mayor, flipping a new card, and he is uh, wanting to do these four icons. So next location for him is this one, which is on the card. Does he have rice? He does have rice now. Um, so he will do this, which is not good because he's going to get a lot of them. So he moves over here. He uh, will move to the middle one because he does have a yellow worker. He will place here. Oh man, he's just zooming. And with his purple worm bus, he's going to go one, two, three spots, which lets him score for his reputation. His reputation still at the lowest level for two points there, but that's two points twice. So he gets four. One, two, three, four. And now he's past me and is up, as you can see here, eight to seven. Uh, moving back to the center. He placed a worker. Now he's exploiting. Oh, man, I feel like the game ends. I guess I forgot to mention this. The game ends after one of these tracks gets to the second to final spot. There's an arrow with a line that signifies the game's about to end. So you finish the current round, then both players get one final turn. And the water one only has five tokens before that symbol is revealed. Okay, for that, he's going to get a blue worker. And then this would be flipped over, but his is already full. We'll toss that over there. Then he'll take the action. Coming down here to the inventions board, he has two food and two wealth. So he has four. And at four, his priority is to get one brilliant and one ordinary um, invention. And this card dictates he's going to take the bottom most ordinary. So he's going to take this and this. And he's going to slot them into his factory up here, like so, and like so. So, really don't like that. And then I think his turn's just about done. We'll move the Mega Machine in just a second since it is in the uh, same location as him. When he gets a new invention, yeah, that is the end of that turn. Okay, well, I do need to refill those, which will be kind of fun, because I am hoping to get this level three one soon. Hopefully it's a good one. One brick, a movement on a pilgrimage track, and three points. Seems okay. And this one here. Okay, now for cleanup, since he is done, he ended his turn with the Mega Machine. Ah, I feel like I maybe made a mistake. Since he moved to a location with the Mega Machine, I think he would have taken that action. Yeah, that is right. He would have tried to take it if he has one of every resource and an invention ready. He does not have an invention ready, so he wouldn't have done that. So I think we did everything.
correct. So we're all right. All right, Mega Machines moving counterclockwise. And we are back to me, and I just can't produce this turn, so I need to move forward somewhere. What do I want to do? So this one, let me expand. I don't have bricks. I have some wealth I could do it with. Hmm, tempting. Um, this one would be good because it will give me the green that I need in order to uh, use this ability on my trade banner to get a level three thing for free. Or, because those are my two spots, the third spot, I could go to the Mega Machine. I do have a invention ready down here on my factory that is ready to go to the Mega Machine. Hmm. Do I have a blue worker? I don't. But I probably don't want to... Uh... Yeah, that wouldn't be good because that's at the Town Hall. And I would have to take two exploit tokens, and I already have one water. I don't want to uh, be in a fight with them. So I think for now, we'll just do that first thing I mentioned. So we're going to move two spots. One, two. I don't even have a red worker. So I'm going to go here in the red spot so I don't have to pay any steam. I don't get to use the workshops, obviously. Um, but I do get to do the action. And first I exploit. So I'm going to exploit this forest land here, which gives me a green worker here and a coal. Really moving far on the coal there. It would be nice to get some water and just pump some steam out of there. Okay, and then I'm going to come back down here. I am going to remove this banner so that I can get this level three upgrade for free. And I also get the stuff on it. So I'm going to come over here to my uh, factory. We're going to slot him right here and I'm going to get a brick. A movement on a path, move on the underground path. That way I've moved at least one on all of the paths so far. I feel all right about that. And then I also get three points, one, two, three. So I'm at 10 and I'm up 10 to eight. I don't feel like I'm uh, doing incredibly well, but uh, hey, we're, uh, we're having a good time. Okay, I think I did everything. I exploited, I performed the action. There is no cleanup there. So we are back to Mrs. Mayor. Oh, this is a busy card with lots of symbols on it. Next location does have the symbol that they're looking for. Can they electrify? They can. Um, not with uh, energy, but with the two wealth they have. So that is what they will do. She will move here and play this uh, green worker here which will let them remove this blue uh, conflict token here. Removing one of those lets them move up on the blue pilgrimage track here, just getting even further ahead of me. Um, and then they're going to exploit this mountain spot. Oh, no. Oh, wait, we're okay for a minute. Oops. Uh, gives them a yellow worker. Again, they have six workers, so I need to somehow get rid of some of those. Hmm. Um, okay, then they'll do the action. We're going to try and do it in this district, but that one doesn't have a uh, district that can be electrified, so they'll go clockwise. And the next one they can do is this one, paying their two wealth in order to electrify it. So this worker will be removed. They will get another prestige here, oof, which will let them move uh, two progress tokens on inventions. And they do have a 
logical order for how they move those as well with the most steps left to reach the end of his progress track. In case of a tie, the tied options from bottom to top, left to right. Okay, so two movements. Um, it's definitely going to be this one. Coming up here to the full factory. That one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We'll go one. Now it has eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, it's still this one. So two movements there on that one. Um, okay. And that should be their entire turn. There's no cleanup. So it's back to me here at the middle of the board. Okay, I forgot to do this again, but this has moved back up to available so I can produce if I want. I have a yellow and a green worker. I have a bunch of energy. <laughs> ah, it's tough. Having never played before, I'm just trying to like put together something of a strategy in my head and it's uh it's not super easy i wish i had a blue worker because so i kind of want to uh you know what i'm gonna do it even though i don't have a blue worker it might be dumb i'm gonna move one spot here to this red location um which means i couldn't use workshops they're full anyways well actually they're not full because i could use this one oof because this is the town hall no, that's dumb because I'll go into like exploit trouble. What's the water? You know what? I'm going to do it. I think I need to go into conflict with them at some point, probably. So let's do it just for a minute. And then I will uh, fix that before. How do I fix it, though? I need to be able to blue worker down here. Would let me do it. A uh, worker here. Would let me do it. Maybe I'll go there on my next turn. Okay. We'll just uh we'll we'll run with this. So I'm going there. I don't get to do the workshop. Actions. Actually, now that I think about it, I am going to. Hmm. Am I? Yeah. Let's go here. So it costs two steam. And get rid of those steam. One, two. I get a remove the workers that are there and then this is the town hall so we can take any color and i'm going to uh take a green guy here and he will give me two points plus my reputation which is just a two so four points we're up to 14 and then my yellow guy here uh, which will give me one brick then for exploit, I'm going to take a water and a cave. Um, oof, a question here. Do I get to take them in whatever order I want? <laughs> I need to be able to. That would be very nice. Let's see. In any order. Okay. Love that. Okay. I'm going to do this one first and place it here so i get a red worker and a steam Bloop. and then the blue one i get a blue worker and two water and those two water are going to go boom boom and give me six steam which is really great one two three four five six Okay, that's exploit. Now I uh, need to do the action. The action I want to do since I'm at the location with the Mega Machine is to uh, contribute to the Mega Machine. So to do that, I have to pay one of every resource, including one of these wealth uh, tokens. So I've got the wealth token, whoops. And then we'll do one of every other resource then i can take one of these inventions that is ready 
and I'm going to put it right face down right here, which gives me 10 points, five worm movements, and a movement on a, uh, what's this called? A uh, pilgrim track. 10 points. Love that. So I'm at 24. Um, five worm bus move. Oh, this is great. This is going to help me a lot. So we've got one steam. That's number one. Uh, this is score my reputation. So is this one. So that's two, four. And then an energy and another steam. So an energy and a steam. And four more points. So I'm at 28 now. Whew, okay. And then I take this topmost university invention and place it back in the exact same spot that uh, the one I traded for it came from. And do I get everything on that or not? I can't remember that little detail. Yeah, you just get the rewards on the space that I put these on. Okay, this little bonus is now here since every connected spot to it has been covered up. And this will go here. And now anyone that takes this workshop action will also get that benefit as well. Okay. I feel like, I feel like that was a pretty good turn, but I mean, uh, I don't know. I don't really know what I'm doing. So maybe it wasn't, but last up, we do have a problem. I have a uh, conflict with the yokai because I have two of these blue river tokens. Because of that, I need to flip this operation tile to the other side. Um, and I'm going to want to get that flipped back ASAP because now I would get fewer benefits. I basically don't get to move my upgrade token up when I'm a follower and not a producer. So anyways, there is uh, that. And I uh, ended my turn on the same spot as the non-player character. So one, two, three, move here. And on this, so it moves one over here. That was a big turn, but I, uh, I think it was pretty good. It felt good, if nothing else. All right, back to the mayor. And looking at their next spot here, that symbol is on the spot. Do they have bricks? They have one brick but no wealth. So that is not enough to do that. So they would look here at trade. They have four um, of those luxury items. So that is, uh, that's what they will do. So you will move over here to this location. You don't have any red workers, so you would not, you would go there because you don't have red workers. Dang it, I needed you to put those out because you're about to get a bunch of points. Oh, well. Okay, so no workers to place. Oh, scratch that. Or wait, yes, they'd still need to be red. So never mind. So exploit. They're going to take a green. Green is going to give them a green worker, which they can't take. So instead, they are going to get five points because of their ability on the card we drew at the very beginning. So we'll give them those five points. And then um, we are going to, what's the next one? Trade. Uh, I shouldn't have swapped cameras. We're going right back down. Down here at the uh, trading post for the different cities. He's going to be looking at, or excuse me, she, at this location. They have four of these. Um, what are they called? Luxury goods. So with four of them, they're going to get 10 points and they're going to get their banner out. They ignore this uh, orange one, but and still pretty good there. 10 points and a banner. 10 points puts them at 23 and I am at 28. So ugh, pretty good turn for them. Okay. He ended his turn on the same location as the Mega Machine, so it's going to move. Boop. 
And now we are back to me. Starting my turn way up here. Do I want to go here? I don't have a yellow worker, so probably not. I have some energy, and energy would let me... Yeah, what does this fully mean? So it's, uh, when you electrify this for three energy, you get two points. This blue expl exploit, or excuse me, conflict removal token and a prestige. Do I like take this or do I just pretend as if I had removed a blue one or do I actually remove a blue one? Because removing a blue one would be very nice for me since I have two of those blue ones that I uh, don't want anymore. I need to remove one of those as fast as possible before I can produce. Okay, yeah, so I would just get that removal reward, which is to move up on the blue river track, which isn't bad, to be honest. Mm -hmm -hmm. But I think I need to get rid of, I think I need to go here because I want to get rid of that really badly. Mm, I wish I had two blue workers, but I do not. What color is this? It has to be green. Yeah, I don't have a green worker either. Okay, we're going to move one, two, three spots, which will cost a steam and pay two steam. So that's three steam. One, two, three. Um, in order to play this blue worker right here, and he'll let me remove this, which is good. It will make it so I'm not in conflict with them anymore at the end of my turn. Um, and I get to move on this blue track as the reward there. Then, so I placed the worker. We're, <laughs> dang it. But doing, no, that's bad. I don't know if I want to do that actually, because I'm going to have to exploit that one. And that one. That one's actually not too bad right now because I uh, I only have one worker. Okay, I'm yeah, I will just continue with it. So exploiting this will give me a red worker and a coal. Coal moves that down. Red worker goes here. Um, and then yeah, I'll just expand again. I'll put an expansion thing here. So I'm going to pay one brick and a wealth token to put out this right here. And placing that there is really nice because it will actually let me get rid of uh, that right there. So now I won't be in trouble from them. And removing that one lets me move two with my bus, which is one steam and two points. One steam, two points, I'm at 30 points. Okay, I did the action. Um, I am at the location with both this guy, one, two, three, so he moves here. And with this, so it moves here. Okay, back to the mayor. Where are you, mayor? Here. Next location it doesn't show that one, but you do have that one and a yellow worker and you do have two food. Um, so you're going to move over here, here, which would remove this, whoops, placed you upside down. That there, you'll take yellow worker, place him here. Ah, to move three, energy, steam, steam. Luckily, you don't get steam, but you do get an energy. Then you'll exploit this water. Again, I don't like that because that means the game is like getting dangerously close to ending. You get a new blue worker. And then we're going to come down here, and you are going to, with two food, you're just going to take two basics, I believe. Let me double check your logic tree. Yeah. He'll take both of these. 
I'm coming up here to his factory. He will place them here and here. Pay for them with those two food. And then two new ones will come out. Boom and boom. And then let's see, he's done the exploitation. He did the uh, action. This non player character is here as well. So he'll move one, two, three spots to right here, blocking that one. All right. Now we're back to me. Um, oh, and I guess last turn I forgot to, uh, down here at my factory, I forgot to flip this over because I'm not in conflict with the blue yokai, the river yokai anymore. Um, so that's good. So I could do a production turn. Hmm which might be a good idea. I feel like I need more inventions. I have two red workers. So this, I mean, this could be pretty good. Boom, boom. I'm taking green. Isn't great, but I think I'm just going to produce. It will give me some more options. So slide this over and then we'll do all three of my machines, which is uh, seven steam. Okay, this will give me one, two wealth tokens. Uh, one luxury good, one victory point. I'm at 31 now. And that one went boom, boom, two times. This building is boom, boom, two luxury goods. Where's that? Here. Here. Three movements on my uh, silkworm, which is two points for reputation, one energy, one steam. Steam. Two points to 33. And one energy. And then four points. Yeah, four points is at 37. And then this hits the end, so it's a victory points there for that. Just four points. One, two, three, four. I'm guessing that the second movement that should go is lost. Um, but I will double check that in just a sec. And then we've got boom, boom, two brick. And that moves to upgrade Whoop. and this one three points one two three at 44 and i'm just going to make sure here that i don't get those four points again but i'm assuming not after the uh, invention is all the way upgraded yeah don't get those okay um so last up i activated three buildings so i get to move on three different uh pilgrim tracks and i feel like and they don't have to be different i guess i get three movements need to remember the scoring conditions we've got university inventions invention tracks at the end reputation level and reputation level is really hard you have to electrify a ton well I'm just going to move on mountain, forest, and underground, I guess. Okay, and that was my production turn. I'll slide this gear back to the left so I can't produce this next turn. And now um, it is Mr. or Mrs. Uh, Mayor's turn to produce uh, just the blue ones. So she's going to get one wealth. And one upgrade there. Uh, one food. And this, which does now upgrade. Hmm. And producing scary when they're getting so much stuff. Uh, one. Yikes. Your factory is so much better than mine. One of those and two points. So you're up to 25. 
Um, and that moves up here, which gives you another point 26. Okay. This moves here, gives you two of these. Boom, boom, which is four points for the two <laughs> reputation markers. So you're at 30. Then this one is a brick. And up once. This one is a luxury good and up once. This one is a brick and up once. And thank goodness that's the end because that's <laughs> that's scary. I need more inventions stat. All right. Well, that was uh, my turn and uh, the mayor's follow action. So now it is the mayor's turn and you are here. Oh, we have flip over a card. Okay, Mega Machine is here. So that, uh, I think, trumps everything else. Let me double check. And I don't think you have any of yours up to that white dot, though. Okay, so the Mega Machine action is on the card. And the Mega Machine is there. And they can perform the... Uh, electrify action so they would go here um, to this spot removing this green worker and this green worker and then using their one green worker and i think they would always place in an uh, the lowest city first so there is going to get them four points and a movement on a track and we follow this which is the blue track that and four points. Oh, I need to end this game fast. They're catching me. 34 to uh, 44. Um, okay, so that was the workers. Now, exploit the mountains gives them a yellow worker here. And then the electrify action. So looking in this district, they will pay this energy, this wealth token, to electrify this, which is going to give them a okay, prestige. And that prestige will be a movement on, again, this blue track. <laughs> I'm not doing so good on this easy mode, I don't think. Okay, Mega Machine is here, so it moves. And we are back to me for a city action. I have four of these, uh, um, what are they called? Luxury goods. So I'm kind of looking down here at these uh, trade locations. Because four would give me some good stuff. I don't have enough steam for some of these, but... Um, how many steam do I have? I have four, so I could max go here. What does this city mean? When you obtain a mountain tile, gain the reward from the Mega Machine Shop. Mega Machine Workshop, including any upgrades it might have. Oh, okay. Uh, that's not as wonderful as I thought it might be. Ah, uh, but... Mm. I think it's actually pretty good. Yeah, I think I'll do that. So I'm going to move here to this spot. I have to pay two steam in order to go there to remove both of these red guys. And then I'm going to use my two red guys. And do I care which one first? I don't think so. So we'll go here, move up on the green track, move your view up there to one two times then back down here the other red worker i can move on any track i keep forgetting what those four conditions are let's move on the forest i think so we're up to six there at the forest okay so we did the actions 
or excuse me, the workers then were exploiting the forest. Taking this gives me a coal and a green worker. Um, that is going to be my second one, though. I don't like that, but uh, is what it is for a minute at least. Um, and then the action is trade. So I'm going to trade here, which costs two steam. And I have four of these luxury goods, so I'm going to spend all four of those. And I guess one wealth, so I can do all five, which is three, six, nine points. Place out my uh, banner there. And this one means to immediately activate the banner without the cost of removing it. So I also get the workshop action here which is two, four points and a movement on a track. So I get the banner out there, 13 points and a movement on a track. So I go from 44 to uh, 57. And I'm going to move on the forest track again. So now I'm at eight points on that track, which you can see right there. Um, okay, I did the action. Clean up. We do have this guy here. He's going to go one, two, three to right here. And now I do have a problem. I'm in a fight with the forest yokai. So that flips over and I get fewer steam, which is a bummer, but it needed to happen. I feel like that was a pretty solid uh, turn. So um, I think that is, that's me. Flipping over the mayor's card. Mayor's here. They do want to do this action, and they do have bricks. They have three. So that's where they will go. You will go here. You do have blue. You will go here so that you can remove them because you have a ton of blue. Remove two. Gives you five steam. They don't do anything with steam though. So what uh, what do I do with that? <laughs> These rewards are ignored. Okay, well, happy for me. And then this one removes your topmost yokai, which is this uh, mountain one, which lets you move up uh, one of your Invention tokens, which is the farthest one from the end, is going to be this top left one. So it's going to go like that. Okay, now back here on you again. You did your workers. Now you're exploiting the mines, the underground. And that one is going to give you a red worker here. You see his board there. Um, and then he is going to spend his two of his brick in order to expand and build, trying to match this district, which can't. So he'll go clockwise until he gets to this one, like this. And then he'll get to place this there which will give him two warm bus movements. One, two, which is a steam, and, which he ignores, and an energy, which he does not ignore. Okay, and now he's done the action. There is nobody. <laughs> I just uh, did the... Uh... Oh, no, I didn't. I just moved the wrong piece. So that's right. This... uh because that moved in by him. So this should have gone like that. Okay, we did that right. I just moved the wrong uh, magnate. Meant to move the mayor. Okay, but we did everything correct. So it is back to me now. Um, and I did a city action last turn, so I can produce again now if I so desired. I feel like I need the actions or the inventions 
But I don't want to, uh, really don't want to flip that though. So I guess I could build first, but building is quite a ways away. How else can I get rid of those? I have a green worker. I don't have any steam. <sighs> Not sure. I don't love any of these at the moment, but, uh, I'm going to move. Ah, uh, this is bad. I need steam as a problem. I don't have a single, a single steam, which means I can't put workers out this turn. So I need to ignore the, uh, worker cost. Okay. Well, I'm just going to go here then, I guess, since I can't place a guy anyways, then we'll go straight to exploit. So we'll take the water which again is uh, making this dangerously close to uh, ugh, being done. Then I will take a blue worker, two waters, which moves me twice in the right direction. I only get two steam each. So that's one, two, three, four steam and a blue worker. Um, and then for the action, do I want to do the mega? I feel like that might be smarter here. Maybe. Maybe not. <laughs> I don't know. Let's, uh, I feel like it might be. Or I, cause I, I don't even have very much food anyways. Yeah. Okay. Decision made. We're going to the, uh, mega machine to do its action, um, which is down, what do I want to be seeing here? Probably here. We're going to pay one of every resource. So I've got to pay one of these wealth tokens, plus another one for the food I don't have, plus another one for the uh, luxury good I don't have. That was a lot of those, but I think it's the smartest. Then I'll take this off the only one that qualifies place it face down right here which gives me five points five warm movements and a movement on a path so five points is going to put me at 62 five warm movements is let's see one is a steam two three is four points so that's 66 Four is an energy. And five back here is another steam. Yeah, that was probably important to help me get some steam back. Got six. Now, this also is now complete and upgraded. And I will get uh, one of these to put in its place there and that is the full mega machine action and then for cleanup the mega machine is going to move counterclockwise and i am unfortunately in trouble with blue because i have two blue tokens now as well. So I need to flip this over and get rid of that before I produce. Okay. Mayor mega machine or inventions. Got one, two the mega machine is there. Um, you still do not have an invention at the right place though. Okay. Messed up on his turn a little bit. He wouldn't actually go there um, because the mega machine is in the town hall and this card does not have the wild town hall symbol on it. So he would actually continue to here, which does have the invention symbol on it. He only has one rice though, so he wouldn't do that one either. Um, so in this case, he wouldn't do that or that. So he's going to produce. She, I should say, she's going to produce. So, which is not good for me. Uh, we'll just do them. Uh, I 
pretty sure I'm supposed to do them in this order. So this is two wealth tokens. Boom, boom. This upgrades. Uh, two food. Boom. A point and a point. Now he's at 36. Plus one point. Plus it's ready to be used in the Mega Machine now. Ugh. Then this one is one, two luxury goods. One, two points. Plus an extra point. So that's three points up to 40. This one is just a single time. So it's uh, two movements here. One, two, which is two points up to 42. This one is one brick. Uh, where is that right here? This one is one luxury good all the way up to nine. Wow, is it? And this one is one brick. Is that the upgrade marker? It is one brick. Whew. Okay. Now I get to follow, but because I am in a fight with the river yokai, I will not get to move my progress markers, which does stink. But I will get one luxury good, three movements on this, which is, uh, whoops, bumping the main board around a little bit, which is steam, two points, four points. I'll take the steam. And four points puts me at 70. Um, then four points me at 74 then one luxury good three movement here is uh energy steam steam kind of like those university ones they give you a good stuff whoops that's a three steam steam and an energy I feel like i need to electrify i've got a lot of that um a brick movement and three points brick movement on a track let's go with the river track again and three points i'm at 77 okay and that was my follow so now it is my turn since they are done producing okay and my bus got turned around okay i am up there i need to get rid of a couple pieces here. What is the double mountain? Yeah, that's a brutal one. I feel like I'm just trading one type of a exploit marker for another one. Generally, I guess I could expand. That would be two movements forward. I could move. Hmm, I have a blue. What is the cave? Hmm. Yeah, that one's not terrible. Okay, let's do that. I'm going to move forward to zoom back here in the middle. One, two, going to pay two steam. One, two, in order to remove these workers, then I can put a blue guy here. And I'm going to use that to remove this one. I don't get the benefit from it because it doesn't have that flame symbol next to it, but I won't. They won't be mad at me anymore, which is good. Um, so I placed a worker. Then I will take this underground token. So they're going to be mad at me <laughs> in a minute. But I get a red worker and a coal. Um, and then I am expanding. I want to expand... I'll probably just do this last double one here. So for two bricks, this will come over here. And then I can 
I got to pay my two bricks for that. Which one, which one? I'm going to get rid of this one there. And let me just double check that I didn't forget anything. We did the workers. We did exploiting. We performed the action. And clean up. I am in this, or no, not as the non-player character. So I don't think anything happens if I end a turn in the same location as the other player. Don't remember reading anything about that. I'm fairly certain. Okay. Um, so I am no longer, they're not mad at me. The water, you okay? Back in balance with you. And I'm back in balance with you. But the cave dudes I'm not in balance with, so... They break my factory a little bit, but I only have two guys anyway, so that's probably okay with me for a minute. Back to the solo bot. You are moving, looks like probably there, yes, since you have nine. Ah, this is no good. And you're going to go here to remove those. And you have one red worker. So you will place it. You prioritize the districts that are farther away. So you're going to place it here to get a yellow movement on the track here. I'll show you that track briefly. So he finally moved up to a first spot there. Um, and then, and this game is almost over, which is stressing me out. Uh, he exploits, or oh, whoops, not that one. Where, where are you? Here. You exploit the forest here, which gives you a green worker in that spot. We just removed that one from, and then you are trading, <laughs> Uh, with this spot here, because that is the leftmost one that he does not have a banner in. And he does have his nine of those clocks. I'm pretty sure he doesn't get this orange thing. I just want to double check, though. Oh, no, he will get the orange one. He just, uh, he will never remove them later. So he won't get this action by removing it later. Woof, but he does get the orange one. So he has a bunch of those. So he's going to spend five of his nine. He's down at four. And get six points, a banner. A movement on this, which lets him remove this, which gives him a water movement on this track, moving him up to there. That was from that. Yep. Then he gets this orange reward here for free. So he gets to move on the green track. A green worker, which he can't fit. So he gets five points to 47 and one luxury good back. And then he gets six more points. So 12 points on top of that. So he's going to be at 59. There. 59 to 77. Ugh. Okay, that was a pretty solid turn there. And now his trade is done. He's not in a location with the Mega Machine or the non-player character. So it is back to me okay i don't have very many turns left here what am i oh, i'm going to maximize points the green one scores for university tiles do i have any more of those i could trade i don't so i only have two Ugh. moving up on the green track would be good electrifying some stuff might be nice hmm 
let's uh yeah these are pretty good what if i uh boom boom what to electrify though and where is that that's all the way behind me so i'd have to pay a bunch of steam to get there so maybe i don't want to do that mm. ah, maybe i do though yeah i th i think i do i'm gonna spend the steam so we've got one two three four movements i gotta pay two extra steam plus the two for that spot so that's four steam Ugh. Um, okay, I'm here. I've got a green worker. I'm going to place him here, I think, so that I can remove what? What do I want to remove? I'm going to remove this yellow so that I can move up on this progress track and get three points. One, two, three to 80. That was uh, this one here. Then I'm going to electrify with one, two, three electricity. I'm going to electrify this spot, which will give me one of these. It'll give me two of those. We've got one, two, so three more points. One, two, three, and that one can be traded there. Um, remove, well, not remove one rice or excuse me food for that one then another prestige here on whatever track i want i'm going to go with green and then i will flip this tile over to its electrified side got me a bit of prestige but man it's hard to get that reputation up I've only seen it here, that icon. But anyways, now this uh, non-player character moves one, two, three spots, blocking that one. And now we're back to the mayor bot. The mayor bot is here, looks here, and he can perform the mega action now, which is a bummer because that's what he's going to do. So he's going to move here. Pay the two, and then which removes this guy, and he's gonna about to have a killer turn. He's gonna take three workers. Whoops. Try not to drop them. And we'll put one here, which gives him two four points. So now he's at 63. Also gives him a movement on the pink track. Pink, pink, pink is over here and a prestige that moves his reputation up and lets him put a flag on any of these cities he only has one left so it's going to go there his reputation marker will go up so he'll get uh, i'll show you that over here three points per reputation check then He's going to put a worker here. That one gives him three movements on the silkworm or the worm bus, three points and an energy and a steam that he doesn't care about. So, um, energy. Crap, where was that at? Did he start at one or two? I thought he was at one. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention and three points so now he's at 66 and then a worker here which gives him three points and a brick wow his engine is so much better than mine and three points is 69 to 83 at the moment okay then he's going to exploit which is this token here Gives him a blue worker and this token here, which gives him a yellow worker. And the one he just removed here triggers the end of the game. So 
After this turn, we will both get one more turn, and then this will be over. Ugh. And he's catching me a point, so I'm uh, not feeling good about that. But we'll see what we can do here. Okay, he still has not done... <laughs> He still has not done his action. That was just exploit. So now his action, he wants to do the mega machine action. So let's uh, zoom down here. Well, let's come over here to his board first. So he's going to take a technology that can be upgraded. That one cannot. This one can. And I think he goes from bottom top left to right like normal. So he's going to take this one. He's going to place it right here which gives him five movements and a track movement on pink let's come up to the track give him the pink track movement first wait one's well, pink this one's pink um then after that he gets five movements on his bus which is steam three six and an energy steam. So six points and an energy. So he's at 75 plus um, an energy. Just looking up here at his stuff. You can see he's catching me 75 to 83. Um, and I gave him his energy. And then he takes this university upgrade tile and slots it into the same spot. And he'll get four points from that one if he uh, produces again. Okay, now that's his uh, action done. He is in the same spot as the non-player character. One, two, three. And the Mega Machine goes one clockwise as well. Whew, that was a lot. And I didn't like it. <laughs> Okay, well, I have one turn left. What to do with it? I don't know. Where are red workers? There, okay, that's not bad. Could go there. One, two spots away to the mega machine. Man, I'm one wealth token short. Rats. Unless I can get one somehow, but I don't see a way to do that. I don't think it's probably the best play anyways, though, so it's okay. Let's, um, oh, it might be, though, because it would let me. So if I go here, I can get rid of workers for two steam. One of the workers is this guy, because he's on the, uh, blimp. Mega machine, dude. I can get two four points move up on a track and get a prestige which would let me get rid of this uh, that seems pretty good then this one would unfortunately uh be in trouble but maybe i don't care i do only have two luxury goods though so it's not like i'm gonna have a big payday down there at the trade action because i can't afford to do the mega machine action i don't know if that's the uh, best move i need a big turn because i think he's going to have one ah, i'm not sure i'm gonna do it i think so we're gonna go one two move here and pay one steam in order to put this worker okay i'm actually going to go back and not put him here i'm going to put him here pay a second steam take all of these workers off then i'm going to send him here which will just give me four points one two three four then i get a track movement and a prestige i'm going to go with the track movement here on green i think and then prestige marker moves there so now on my board i can get rid of one of these which one which 
one. I'll just take this one. Well, ah, yeah, I'll take that one off. And then for the action trade coming down here to the city board. I only have one steam, so that kind of makes my decision for me. And I have two, one, two. Two luxury goods, I will sell them both for two points each. I don't really even think I need to get the uh, banner, so I'm just going to keep my wealth token. So that's four points. One, two, three, four to 91. And now I have done, I think, everything there. So closing out my turn, the Mega Machine does move. And that was my... <laughs> uh, last turn. So, Mayor Bot's last turn. We've got him looking for inventions. He has some rice, so that's where he's going. He's going to move here. Uh, he has two yellow, so he'll go here and purge these. That one first. Then use both yellows. To move two of these, and it was the ones farthest away, so that's one. And that one will give him one point. And then this one, I think, because it's bottom up, which would upgrade that. So one point for you, 76. And then th this one here is three movements on this, which is one, three, six, or the steam, three, six points. Six points there is 84, or sorry, 82, Ooh, 82 to 91. Now he is going to take this blue exploit token, get a blue worker. He has four blue workers at the moment. Then um, he will take some inventions. He has uh, four. <clears throat> Which means he will take the, uh, or sorry, five. So he's going to take this bottom innovative one and the brilliant one. Well, no, he's not because he can only hold one. So he's, woof. He's just going to take one, which will just be his three. Food, so he'll get to keep his two wealth tokens. He'll take the brilliant one, install it in the last spot up here on his factory. And since he only took one, he's going to get all of those benefits. So he gets a luxury good, a wealth token, a movement on this track, which is one point, and then three points, one, two, three, Ooh, 86 to 92. And that is the end, wowza, of the game here at two and a half hours. Um, but it was good, lots of learning. I really enjoyed it, it was fun. It's a puzzle, ripped my head out a little bit, but um, okay, let's do the end of game scoring. So I, oh, I forgot I even had this. Uh, <laughs> Uh, government grant tile, which I guess is good. I get to do three movements. I don't know if that's especially helpful. Well, actually, it will be. Because I'll do one, two, and that one is uh, four points for me. One, two, three, four. And then my last one here is a double. So it's, you got to score it twice. So this is three points times two is six. So it's 95 to 101. Flip this over and show them at 100. Feel kind of cool for a second. Um, then he, at the end of the game, gets to perform three advance any pilgrim actions before beginning end game scoring. And he is uh, looking at pink. So... He's going boom, boom, boom. 
up there, which we'll zoom up there for a second. He was at the same spot as me. One, two, three. Oh, so he also gets to score these numbers. So he gets 10, 11, 12, 13, plus 3, 16. 16 plus 86 is 102. Ah, but he's one more than me at the moment. Oh, so he doesn't lose points for his river. Ah, he's going to beat me. Dang it. Uh, we'll see, though. Scoring wilderness tracks. We'll do his first. So he gets the... Uh... Let's do river first. He gets victory points here. Ten. Times the number of wilderness hex types not present. Ten times zero. Hmm. Yeah, how does that work? He has two of the same. They're both green. But it tells you not to put them, not to stack them. You put them in separate spots. So what does that mean? Does he get 10 times 1 or 10 times 0? Don't know. Well, we'll see if his final score is within 10 of mine. And if it is, then, then we'll be very confused. Okay. Well, that was, uh, what was that one? That was his river. Then his underground is at 3 points multiplied by his reputation level. So three times three is nine. So he gets nine points. He's at 111 now. Then for mountain, he is at one point multiplied by the number of tracks that are at the end. He has zero of those, so that's zero. Then forest, he's at two points times the number of university tiles he has, which is one. So he gets two points. 113 and then he gets one point for every two workers and leftover resources you have combined and steam doesn't count he has one two three four workers he has uh, four energy so that's eight four energy four bricks that's 12 um, six luxury goods is 18 19 20 21 so he's going to get uh, 10 points for those so now he's at 123 and that is his end score he might be at 133 if he got points for the um river multiplier because it would be 10 points times one because he has definitely has three different types of symbols he has a fourth which is the same symbol but all four spots are covered up and that's how it told me to keep them during the game We'll see. We might give him 10 more points in a second. Ooh, okay, scoring my tracks. We're going to start with the river track. Well, I've got six points times one there. Uh, so six, that puts me at 107. Then the mountain track, I'm at two. And two multiplied by... I have... Three. Let me see. Let's go down here for a second. I have one, two, three inventions all the way at the end. So that's uh, six points, actually. So 113. Then the underground track uh, reputation level is just two. And I'm only at one there. That says two points. Um, and then last up is my... Uh, forest track which i did pretty well with i got to 14 multiplied by the number of university tiles you have i have two of them so that's going to give me 28 points plus 15 is 38 43 43 and then i have back down here on my board i have one two Three, four, five bonus resources. So that's just two more points. So 145. I believe. Oh no, I've got to do some negatives here. So I've got lose the victory points in red. So that's six times the number of operation tiles showing their conflict side. 
I just have one, so I lose six. 45 goes to 39. And that means I won. Regardless, because even if he did get his 10, we'll give him his 10 to 133. Barely snuck that out by six points. And that is going to do it for this solo playthrough of Dai Toshi. Uh, it took me a while, a long while, actually. Uh, it's really late in the morning, so just a couple minutes of thoughts here, and then I'm going to wrap this video up. Um, really like the game. I really like how it looks aesthetically. Really like these acrylic steam and wealth tokens. And for whatever reason, I really love like a record of goods sold board kind of like this, where it just keeps track of everything you've done, how many times you've upgraded your inventions. I, I just like... It reminds me of Sand, which is an earlier game that Devere did this year that's actually in the same uh, universe, technically, as this game. Um, you've got Itoku, Yokai Sketch, Bamboo, Silk, Daitoshi, and Sand. And Sand has a similar board like this, where you're keeping track of everything that you've sold in that pickup and deliver game. Um, and this one is an awesome board as well. Really like how you get steam in the game by moving your water and coal up and down. Really awesome. Um, and I like these sections of the board that change, that um, if you're being too reckless, will become worse over time. The uh, production turns are cool. Being able to activate all your stuff, you got to have a lot of seam for it. But yeah, really love the factory section. Very cool. The city stuff I like as well. I feel like it's a little harder for me to uh, visualize in my head. I think it's because the board being circular is really cool and makes like a cool visual effect. And I don't know how it would work not in a circular fashion, to be honest. So it's not like a knock on that in any way, but just because some of it is like upside down and I'm like, okay, I think I want to go over here. Like how many spots away is that is for? It does. It's not, a, it's not too bad, but, um, just the fact that it is that circle makes it a little trickier for me to remember you know, what options I do have on my city turns. Um, it seems like there's a lot of different avenues you could take. I went really hard on the forest track up top and that uh, forest track um, I needed to get. What was the multiplier for that one? It uh, didn't have to do with these. Oh yeah, it had to do with um, these university tiles, university inventions, excuse me, that you can get at the uh, Mega Machine. I do like that that is also a rotating piece, so it's, it's kind of hard to plan for to get there. Um, but very cool action there, and you could go really hard on any of those tracks, I think, really focusing on the water track. Um, because you could get a lot of water pieces here and at the, uh, what's it called? The town hall. So there's two spots that will give you those water ones. But if you're going to go that route, then you want to have as few, um, what are these called? Outrage? It's not outrage. Uh, uh the word slipping me, these tokens as possible so that you can get these you know, 18, 19 points multiplied by a multiplier of four. That would be really high. Um, I only got 24 points from my best track, and it looks like you could get quite a few more than that. I also didn't even get a single outer ring piece built. They cost four bricks, and I mean, they do look really cool. They've got two of these... Uh, so anytime you build one of those, you get to purge two of your... I should have done that. Should have done that later in the game, maybe. And it looks like there are really cool actions there as well on the workshops. Yeah, getting those to put two of those out, that's really cool. So I don't know. I'm excited to play this in a multiplayer setting. I didn't love administering the bot, even though it's not too bad. The... I just need like a little, like a print off or something, which probably exists on Board Game Geek, like a decision tree, 
so I didn't have to flip through the rule book quite as much for, okay, if this, then this, this is the um, spot they're moving to, and if this, then this, this is the action they're taking, because those are on different pages, a little bit of flipping back and forth, trying to remember uh, what the what the bot is doing, but it probably simulated a player pretty well. Um, it's kind of crazy that they had eight inventions slotted in their factory, and I only ever got to three, but just from focusing on different things, and I mean, I technically swapped both of these in for other ones, so I guess I got five, but they were replacing. So I don't know. Yeah, I really like it so far. I, I like the production of the game quite a bit. I think Devere is really cool for a... They, their games aren't like Kickstarter prices, but they try to make them feel like deluxe where they can. And I think the dual layer boards and just some of the pieces being acrylic, having cool shaped pieces for some of these that, you know, didn't necessarily have to be a gear here, but it, it feels cool to flip back and forth and having pieces that nest inside your player board. A nice screen printed big maple for the mega machine flying around and cool maples for the worm buses and your magnates. It's just a really cool looking game. The board's a little big, but um, yeah, really, really enjoy it so far. I'm excited to play it some more, see which other avenues I could take um, and how it plays. I want to really try it with three or four players because even though that'll take a bit longer, um, I think it'll be fun to see what's the interaction like at that player count, how much of this board does fully get built out on the follow turns in the factory. If I'm getting getting to do that that much more often to produce, I'd probably focus a bit more on making sure I have enough steam built up at all times um, so that I'm ready for those follow actions. So yeah, I imagine it plays a bit different at those player counts because of that. But anyways, really like this game so far. Devere is one of my favorite publishers lately. Um, so game definitely hasn't disappointed me yet, but this is my first play. So thanks so much for being patient with me as I thumbed through the rule book and probably messed up a couple of rules here and there. Let me know in the comments if you have played this game yet or if it's uh, delivering to you soon. And I will see you on the next playthrough here on Gaming Top Down. Till then, have a good one. Thank you so much for watching this video. As most of you know, Gaming Top Down is an independent endeavor. I don't accept money from publishers for previews or opinion related content. But there are a few ways that you can support the channel and help me keep the lights on. Liking this video and subscribing to the channel helps me to grow. If you're thinking of getting a game that I covered in this video, please click the affiliate link in the description of this video. It helps to support me and doesn't add any cost to your purchase. I also do a weekly gaming podcast where I talk about the board games that I'm playing along with my brother. You can check that out on Apple's podcasts and on Spotify. And you can also get that podcast three days early over on our Patreon. You can follow the Patreon at patreon.com slash supergamebrothers completely for free. But if you do support us over there, you get some extra perks like being able to write into the show, getting early access to the show, voting on the games that I'm going to cover and review, and lots of other fun stuff. Thanks so much for your support, for liking and commenting on my videos. You really are what helped keep the lights on for me. Thank you.